This time I would like to show you a couple of Sublime Text productivity tips. Uh, recently I've read a really nice book about Tmax and after reading it I'm quite happy that I don't have to use it in my everyday work. Uh, but you gave me a couple of ideas how I could optimize my everyday workflow using Sublime Text. Uh, sometimes I have a feeling I'm one of the last Sublime Text users but the program keeps getting updated and I'm quite happy with the development flow I have with it so I just like to share it. So yeah, let me show you what I came up with. One of the problems I had with Sublime Text was that when I was launching it using an alias as dot opening current directory as a Sublime Text project, uh, sometimes it was launching a couple of a couple of different Sublime Text instances and I couldn't understand why, so I had to like switch them using command tilde and then manually close each of them and it was kind of a bad experience but I, I got used to it throughout, uh, throughout the years. Uh, but yeah, uh, recently I came up with that I can just use a shortcut to close the Sublime Text instances and it's like shift command W and it's closing them. Um, but recently I came up with a, with a better way to manage uh, this program instances just by changing one of the default preferences and that's called hot exit. Uh, so hot exit, uh, what it does is that whenever you have a sublime text instance open and one of the files is in a dirty state, it means it, uh, it has some unsafe changes. If you click, if you close the editor using command Q, then when you restore it, it, it remembers the state it was closed in. It remembers the unsaved changes and and that's what's causing the multiple instances of program to, to appear. So yeah, while it has its advantages, let me show you how it works when you have hot exit switch to false. Um, so now, now if I try to close the uh, program with dirty changes, it asks me to confirm the changes, so I can either pre persist them or, or not. Usually I don't want to persist them, so it's also not very effective just to have to use mouse to click this don't save. Uh, but recently I also discovered that I can just use a mouse, uh, keyboard shortcut, namely command D, just to confirm the just to confirm closing of the window. And now you can see that when I open the new instance of Sublime Text, it's the state is clean. So I can just edit some model. I want to close the program. I don't want to persist it, just close, uh, just press Command T. And I have every single time I have a clean, clean state. Uh, so let's say I want to work on a couple of different projects. I just go to another project, open another instance of Sublime, and I can toggle between them so yeah, it's quite um, quite comfortable. Um, another great um, productivity uh, shortcut I recently came up with is about searching. Sublime has quite powerful uh, searching capabilities. You just press Command Shift F to br bring up this pop-up menu, and let's say that you want to search for this this method where it, where it's defined. Uh, so yeah, you can see that it's. Uh, defined here and I'll, until now I just had to manually drag the mouse and double click it to, to open the file with changes. Um, but recently I discovered a great package. It's called go to uh, let me see. It's called open search result. I will link to it in the show notes but after opening the search results list you can just press G O to open it without reaching for your mouse. So let's say that you have a couple of a couple of search results. So you can just cycle through them. I use the VI bindings, so it's quite quite comfortable. I can even search for something is in in search results and then just press go to, to open it. So it's another great uh, great way of not reaching of, of not having to reach for the mouse. Um, another productivity shortcut I recently started using uh, was also a, a Sublime Text plugin. Let me show you. So let's open the user model 
and uh, usually when I work I just have in one of the tabs I have model open and in the another one I have spec so I have to like change the tab open the user spec and then I can like toggle between them working on both spec and model at the same time so it's like quite redundant I have to open model and then I have to open the spec separately uh, so there is a great sublime package for it it offers a shortcut and you can just uh, I think the package is called go to spec rails go to spec I will also link to it in the show notes but you can just play mm, press command shift J just to open the corresponding spec file and if it's already open you can cycle between those using this shortcut so yeah it's quite quite comfortable for me you can also move the files between panes using this uh, uh, shortcut called command shift 2 and now you can just cycle between them so yeah you can open another model and if you want to go to its spec you just press the shortcut you can move it here and yeah that's how I recently working but it's quite quite better than what I was doing until now there's another productivity improvement I've recently introduced into my RSpec workflow. Uh, let me show you first how I was doing it before and how I'm doing it now. So I'm reusing free desktops on, on macOS and I'm switching with, uh, uh, between them using usually using a, a hand swipe because I'm using a trackpad. I can also use this control arrow shortcut but I usually use on this trackpad. So before to run a spec I had to like copy the path of a file using the custom shortcut command dot. I had to paste it in here and I was using this rs command to actually run the spec. Um, so yeah I also usually explicitly run the spring in, um, in its separate process because it's quite often that a spring messes some configuration variables etc up so it's always better to run it explicitly I have an alias for it uh, let me show you it's this one uh, bundle exec spring stop and bundle exec spring server it's running it, exp at it explicitly so I just type rs which is another alias and you can see that it's running the spec here in this pane and, and you can see some output from Spring here. Uh, but yeah, recently I started using another plugin. I think it's called um, uh, test our spec. So you can see that after configuring it, it's quite easy. You can just use the shortcuts. You can use the shift command R shortcut to run the spec from the file, uh, from the line you are in. So let's go to the team spec. And you can see that there are a couple of specs here. Let's just run one of them. You can see I just press Command Shift R. And a single spec is running in line. Or you, there's another shortcut. I remapped it to Command Shift E, and it's running all the specs from from the file. So I don't have to I don't have to reach for my um, for my mouse to. Uh, to run the specs and I think it's quite uh, it's quite better for, for, for productivity and to close this uh, inline terminal you just have to press escape uh, but I remapped escape in uh, uh, macOS setting to caps lock so it's easy more easy to reach for it uh, so yeah I think it's quite uh, it's uh, this approach is better than having to reach for the for the mouse and change the change the workspace in order to run the spec. Another nice plugin I recently discovered is the one called um, it's called open no it's called package resource viewer. So whenever you install a plugin in Sublime Text it comes in this kind of packaged form so you have no way to explore how it looks. But using the package resource viewer um, you can cycle through the list of packages you have installed and it recently it helped me to, to tweak my color scheme so you can just select any of the files from the plugin you have installed and just open them in line 
So let's say that you want to tweak the color of your carrot. Alright, so you can see that this carrot has changed, but let's change another one, the, the block one. So you can see that the color is updating instantly. Uh, without this package, you would have to like make a fork of the plugin, then install it manually in the in the Sublime text. But here you can just explore contents of all the plugins you have installed and tweak them to to suit you better. You can just um, let's say that you want to see how this go to spec plugin looks like inside. You can see that it's some just some Python code you can explore and even learn more about the internals of the of, of Sublime Text itself. So yeah, that's it for as for my tips for today. I hope you will find some of them useful. And yeah, from this ex from this research I did recently into my productivity, I have a feeling that sometimes it's very good just to take a step back. Mm, and look what what kind of habits are slowing you down. Uh, from my experience, it's usually some of the places in your development flow that makes you uh, take your hands off the keyboard and reach for, for the mouse. So I think sometimes it's quite good time investment just to memorize a new shortcut that lets you and that lets you just avoid the mouse altogether and not just to switch to Tmax and V because I had a couple of approaches to using them but so far I couldn't convince myself that it would be better for me than my current workflow. But yeah, I think that tweaking your development from flow from time to time, even if you are already think comfortable, is quite quite a good good habit. So yeah, that's it for me today and thanks for, for watching.